ProfitPassion.com. Visit our website today. Visit our website and register one on one with the Prophet today. ProfitPassion.com Visit our website today. Visit our website and register one on one with the Prophet today. ProfitPassion.com Visit our website today. Partner with us. Visit our website and partner with the Prophet today. This is Pastor Odane C.W. James, Senior Pastor of the Transformation Center in Tampa, Florida. I just want to let you know that the broadcast from Passion Prophet Java Ministries is a life-changing experience. The difference between your next and your now is your knowledge. Your knowledge can jettison you from where you are to where God has designed you to be. Get connected today and God will change your life. everybody this is prophet Xavier Yanari son of the Gaffa if you are watching me right now it means that you are in the right place at the right time you need to get the revelation of the day and I guarantee you that your life will be catapulted and nothing will ever remain the same in your life again people of God stay blessed this is me signing out love you He is a prophetic revelatory voice to the nation since 2001. God has called him to be a prophet of prophets. I all started in Chitun Wiser, Zimbabwe. Also known as a teacher, and a spiritual father in his prophetic school. And mentorship programs. He has over 30 books in his prophetic school. Nicknamed Chariot Rider because of the way he prophesies. He is Prophet Passion. This is Pastor Odane C.W. James, Senior Pastor of the Transformation. Hey everybody, my name is Prophet Fortune Jedida. I watch Prophet Passion broadcast and my life was never the same. And yours can change too. Watch out for what is coming. Bless you.
because what I teach in my prophetic school is called body discernment of spirits. Where if God is speaking to me, I feel heat inside my heart. Even if someone talks here and I feel heat, I know it's not him, it's God speaking. When I'm watching news and there's something coming out on the news and a few hit, I know God is speaking. Greetings, this is Prophet Artist, the Prophetic Sniper, and I'm here in South Africa with the great Gotha prophet passion himself. And ever since I connected to this ministry, my life has never been the same. I encourage you. Matter of fact, I decree and declare that you connect with this grace so that your life will never be the same as well.
Blessings to everybody watching us today. Today is the day the Lord has made that we may rejoice and be glad in it. And I know God is going to bless someone who is watching me right now. I know God is going to take someone who is watching right now. We just started our broadcast. I want you to share the broadcast as much as you can. Go bottom left if you're on Facebook and click share. And those that are on Periscope, invite followers. Those that are watching on KTV, make a phone call to someone. Let someone be blessed. Let someone know that we are here. For I know that I know that I know that God is about to bless somebody. God is about to bring a turnaround in the lives of somebody. The outer teaching being the best teaching in this live broadcast. Many lives have been changed. Many people have testified about how this knowledge have come to your, a lot of people. And I'm so excited because I know that many people are being delivered. Testimonies are being birthed. Today, we are going to talk about five dimensions that are in the power of an altar, uh, connecting from our father in the Lord, Abraham, how he built altars and when God instructed him to build an altar, why would God specifically say, bring this on the out and bring this on the out and bring this on the outer? And I so believe that the devil then came into this world and stole the knowledge from Christians and began to use it in the satanic kingdom. That is why you see uh, we had a, a person who was delivered from satanism last time and he was alive with us here and he testified that in their satanic kingdom, Number one, they have their Bible. And what shocked him when he came to Christ, the same Bible we read is their same Bible. And the only difference is that wherever is written Jesus, in their Bible it's written Satan. And they used the same principles, be it tithing, offering, seeding, and all these, and prayer, and worship, and stuff like that. But he then said it overall, the last thing that is above everything that many Christians that I've seen that they don't practice is the power of an altar. And that's the message that I've been building uh, over a long time to come and bring and bring a blessing to someone so someone can know that there is a blessing that is already waiting for you in the realms of the spirit. So I strongly believe that today is your day. Uh, and I know that God is going to bless you. Someone is asking, uh, Anna Jukik is asking, delivered, but just pay it or no? All right. You don't pay money to receive an anointing. You don't pay money to be delivered. You don't pay money to do anything. If there was a price to deliverance, I'm sure a lot of us, we were not going to afford it, including myself. Is If there was any payment to get anything from God, even to breathe, we are all going to be the brokest people, we're only going to live to pay debts until we die. Because there is no payment in this world that you can really say, God, I'm paying you for what you're doing in my life. But God did send uh, the word to us in principles. God bless you, Motusi Sehume, for your offering. Uh, God really placed us in a special place where we have to understand what He wants us to do and where He wants us to be. And then He put some principles. And those are the principles I'm going to teach you today. And one main principle I have for everybody today is on based on uh Rachel Temitas bless you for your offering is based on outers because outers are very important every one of us need to build an outer so for those of you that were not here last week when I taught on Friday about the power of outers I want you to revisit the broadcast on Facebook and we're going to put a vote uh, uh ask if Darren can 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 do quickly on outer the the picture for outer so we can upload it on youtube we'll try to by all means to put it on youtube just after this one we'll put it on youtube and also uh you can visit our periscope page or facebook page and watch outer part one we called uh one of my sons in india and he shared with us uh southernists in india or, or beer men or juju people uh, i don't know what name they name them in in india that when they want to bewitch people they collect human hair they need a picture of the person they're be bewitching 
and a certain amount according to what you want the person to go through to suffer or anything that you would want for the person to die and once they mix all those ingredients in their satanic kingdom people die people are stroking people are going through rail people divorce people lose children people do abcd people become sick why they are being controlled by an evil outer in the satanic kingdom we called one of the satanist guy that i prayed and delivered in zimbabwe years ago and he began to share a testimony of how they would go into the main streets main street into the road in the main way and they would make sacrifices at a specific time at night that accidents would take place on that specific location because once they make an altar they open a spiritual portal then people come and they have accident and they die premature death they would go to the hospitals and sacrifice on some certain beds and after they do that automatically people will die and then uh he spoke also about coming to church how they destroyed churches by sending girls and destroying the lives of pastors in the church by just men of god sleeping with some female uh females and he goes down that is why some men of god started big but they are no longer big because the enemy sent that trip and they went down and he also spoke about how they have got people that they put in the streets as homeless and some as crippled to beg for people's money and once people connect with them they have access into that person's life and they destroy all those things so we then moved from that one and i uh, we, we called one of my spiritual daughters who is now part of our church in zimbabwe chitungiza and uh, she shared her testimony how she was taken by a maimed physically and she went when she was nine years old and went under the sea for three years she was under the sea for three years under the sea and she shared a testimony that under the sea under the water there is a world with the sun with the moon with the sky and there are people that are living life mamers they've got fish tail but when they get in that world under the the, the waters they've got legs they talk and that's where she was taught to prophesy to heal people and all those things because the demonic realm is so tangible that realm is real and also the realm of god is real and many of you need to tap into a higher dimension in a higher realm that you have never been in and i so believe that god is going to touch you today with a knowledge that will change your life that will build you up and lives will never be the same again chairman uh masiwa is the pastor of the children is a branch is the pastor right now of the lady i'm talking about the lady in zimbabwe that we delivered from satanism uh, after stayed with the maimeds for three years under the water then she came out and she was um even the what do you call it the juju lady of the former president and other musicians artists she known all over zimbabwe and god delivered her and all these people shared their testimonies of how they had life under the water and what they brought into the kingdom of god and how they destroyed saints how they destroyed christians how they destroyed pastors and today i'm just going to empower you with the five dimensions with the five realms and i believe in those five realms you are going to see the mighty anointing of god operating i'm going to take my reading from genesis chapter number 15 verse number 9. genesis 15 from verse number 9. uh i'll start from verse number 8. Mahasekeradiato. Uh, we don't have many people in our office today to share the broadcast and do all that because people are at our new building cleaning. We are believing God to sign just after this broadcast or we are going to go and sign tomorrow morning. And I believe that God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all. Thank you all that have been a blessing to our ministry and those that are a blessing to our ministry in Jesus' name. Genesis chapter number, Genesis chapter number 15 verse number eight going down it says and he said the lord whereby shall i know that i shall inherit it this is a story of abraham when god took him from his father's house and told him i'll put you in a place which i'll show you when he got to the place he wanted to know how he shall inherit the place which god had prepared for him 
And this is him speaking to God. He says, And he said the Lord, Whereby shall I know that I shall inherit it? And he said unto him, Take a hive. God replied now. This is how you inherit something. Because you cannot tap in a dimension without an outer. You cannot tap into a dimension without an outer. Outer is uh, ability a l l lent t uh, through then a accessing then uh, r is realm so it is the ability lent by accessing a realm so you can never access a realm unless you build an outer it is the outer that introduces you into a realm so here god says for you to enter into this realm to inherit what you have what is already yours this is how you do it take me a half of three years old a hypha of three years old a hypha number two and he a she god of three years old number three a ram of three years old number four a, a turtle dove number five a young pigeon and he took into him all these and divided them in the midst and laid each pieces one against each other but the best divided the not amen so these are five dimensions we are going to deal with number one is a hypha if you're writing write a hypha number two it's a dove write a dove number three is a pigeon write a page your number four it's a god write a god number five is a ship write a, a ship or a ram write a ram and um and uh in these five dimension uh step number one i want you to understand this step number one when we talk about a hypha we are talking about a a baby cattle that is still a virgin a cattle that is not yet given birth a title uh, a, a, a hypha mm -hmm. a hypha right a hypha it is a it is a cow that is not yet given birth to a calf so a cow that gave birth is a hypha that gives birth that gives birth is no longer called a hypha it's now called a cow but if it has not yet given birth, it's called a hypha. So God is instructing Abraham and he's saying, Abraham, give a hypha. Why a hypha? Why is it a virgin cow? Why is it it is a virgin? Because Abraham wants to access a dimension. He wants to access a dimension that he has never been in. If you want to enter into a realm that you have never been in, you need to tap into that dimension of Abraham holding a hypha. Because you cannot build outer for everything. There is always outer for something. So if you want money, you build an outer that will give you results for money. If you want healing, you build an outer that gives you results for healing. If you want a breakthrough for this, for that, for this, and that, for this, so you cannot build one out and say, it is for everything in my life. It doesn't work like that. So first dimension, it's a hypha. If you're writing, write it down. A hypha, it's a virgin, it's a virgin uh, cow that you have not yet given birth, right? So if you want to build an outer on that level, you have to build with something. To this day, you cannot take a hypha and bring it to church. Why? Because in the days of Abraham, they had no dollars, they had no pounds, they had nothing. So they used those things as tools of exchange. I give you a hypha, you give me an X. Or I give you an X, you give me a yoke. I give you a yoke, give me this. But now money became a central thing of everything that we have in this world. Therefore, what we ended up doing is instead of someone to take the money to go buy a hypha, someone takes a seed and he gives to that church as standing for your altar. Watch this now. If you understand 
and you believe that God is about to bless you, uh, Alan Hook is saying, teach him how to pronounce Haifa. <laughs> how do you say Haifa? Okay, I think people are getting Haifa. Watch this. Uh, Haifa is a virgin, meaning if you want to receive what you have never received, you have to give what you have never given. It is in the dimension of a Haifa outer that you give a car if you have never given a car. You give a house if you have never given a house. You give a certain amount of money that you have never given. You give clothes that you have never given. You enter in a dimension that you have never operated in by giving what you have never gave before. Right? Then we go to number two. Number two, uh, Wanda says we know what you mean. So we are covered. Uh, number two, we deal with a dove. When we deal with a dove, when we deal with a dove, we are talking now about, about a dimension of discovery. If you are writing, write it down. Dove is a dimension of discovery. It is a dimension of discovery. Now, this is where you see it was a dove that went out from the ark of Noah. When Noah wanted to send a raven, it did not work because the dove brings forth the discovery. That is why you see dove represents the Holy Spirit. The dove is not the Holy Spirit, but the dove represents the Holy Spirit. When when God was creating the heaven and the earth for the discoveries of the earth realm to take place, God needed the Spirit of God to hover on top of the water. And the word hovering is also flying, which represents the movement of the Spirit on top of the water. Why? Because it was a season of discovering something in the earth realm. And when again waters covered the whole earth realm in the book of Genesis chapter number 7 and 8, Noah then took a dove and it discovered an olive leaf and it brought it here. Now, about that dimension of discovery, the greatest breakthrough that ever came in the lives of human beings came only to people that discovered things that were never there. I am riding on what was discovered by someone. That's why I am not effective the way I'm supposed to be effective. I am going on Google to Google because Google was discovered by someone. And you will see that Zuckerberg became so prosperous financially because he discovered Facebook and he is now on top of it while we are all under Facebook and riding through his platform. For me to come out live on Facebook, I'm using a discovery of what he did. There is a discovery that God wants you to bring. Someone discovered mathematics, someone discovered science, someone could discover this and that, someone discovered genealogy prophecy, someone discovered chariots, someone discovered forensic FBI prophecy, someone discovered this. What have you discovered that determines your strength or your stretching to where you are going? You can never reach far when you are riding on other people's discovery. So it is a dimension now of a dove where you begin to discover what have not yet been discovered by everyone. Check everywhere where the dove appeared in the Bible. The only times the dove appeared, there was a discovery somewhere. When Jesus, the Son of God, was discovered in when he turned the age of 30, the dove came down and sat on his shoulders. Why? There was a discovery that was about to take place. So when Abraham took a dove and he sacrificed it, what Abraham was doing, he was entering in a place of discovering his own land. I've been moving for years from my father's house. I now need to settle. There are people that have not yet discovered what they are supposed to do in life. When you are building an altar, you now build an altar and say, as I sacrifice my dove, as I give my dove. Now, dove operates in a realm of love. 
dove operates in the realm of love. That is why in the book of Songs of Solomon, you hear Solomon saying, where is my dove? Where is my sister? Where is my love? Because the dove is love and God is love and the dove represents the Holy Spirit. Oh, so I want you to understand this now, that when you move in the power of the anointing and you grow in the power of the anointing, God wants you to enter in a place of discovery because not all callings are the same. Your calling is not my calling. We can all be prophets, but we are totally different. You now need to discover who you are in the body of Christ. You now need to discover what is your gifting level to operate in that gift. We can all prophesy, but the way we prophesy is totally different because everybody has to discover something for you to be successful. So that that represents uh, discovery. Now we move from a dove now and we 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 deal with a with a ram. A ram. R A M Ram. It's Ram, right? Ram. Now the, the the ram you find it first in the book of Genesis chapter number 22 when Abraham went up the mountain. He said to his servant, uh uh Tarry me here, me and my son, we shall go up and worship God, and me and my son, we shall come down. Now, when he went up there, when he was sacrificing his son, the angel of the Lord came down. When he came down, the angel of the Lord says, Do not kill your son, for I have seen that you love me, says the Lord. Now, ten back there is a ram, and its horn was, was tied to the trees, and he was told to take it and sacrifice it. A ram represents a realm of supernatural, supernatural provision. So, how do you enter into a realm of supernatural provision? You can only enter in a realm of supernatural provision, number one, when you take your Isaac and you put your Isaac on an altar. So it is only an altar called Isaac that provokes or, or manifests the angel of provision. Because every realm you have got its own angel. And that angel cannot give you anything in that realm unless... You build an altar that gives you access into that realm, right? That is why altars, every time you hear of altars, an angel would come down. When Gideon made an altar, an angel came down. When Abraham made an altar, the angel came down. When Jacob went to the altars of Abraham, the angel came down. Every altar releases an angel that is in the realm in which you have opened. Therefore, some of you, you are able to sit down with a billionaire from Arab, uh, what do you call it, from, from Abu Dhabi, from Dubai. And the billionaire will say, I have 50 million that I'm going to transfer to your account if you give me this oil or you give me this God. You have the God, you have the oil, you have all the connections, but no breakthrough comes to you. Why? It is an angel that you have to give you what is in that dimension of millions when you open the portal that is accessed by the outer. I hope someone can understand this. I am saying you want to be married you want a husband a husband is not here on earth that is why makeup is not gonna change the man to be with you uh -uh, nothing will be changed by that nothing will be changed by that a man is in a realm that is why some people that don't look beautiful like you are already married and you are not. That is why some people that are around you and you are better than them, they are happily married and you are not even happily married. Why? Happiness is in a realm. Marriage is in a realm. Millions are in a realm. Lamborghini is in a realm. A mega church is in a realm. Unless you build an altar that exposes you into that realm, you can never get any benefits that is in that realm. 
So the devil will blind us as Christians not to go through the power of altars, but only to stick to prayers. But you have to understand that the loudest voice and the quickest way to reach out to God is through an altar. The prophets of Baal prayed and they cried to their God and nothing changed. Why? Because on their altar there was only a bull. But when Elijah began to cry to God, he put water, he put a bull, he put everything and he called on God. And in 63 words, God came down in form of fire and consumed everything. Why? Because altars will move God to come down. So God wants you to establish yourself in a realm. But you can never get any benefit of that realm unless you build an altar for that realm. So how do I build an altar called Isaac? The name of Isaac itself means laughter. They named him Isaac because when the angels came to the house of Abraham and ate food, and they said, Ah, next day by this time you shall have a child. The woman said, Ah, ha, 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 ha. I think you ate too much. We ate much of KFC today. We are already old, old, old. How shall we give birth? The power of outer does not have anything to do with age. No matter you are 50, you'll be married in a best wedding like no one else in your family. No matter you are 50, you give birth to triplets that are healthy. No matter you are what or what or what or whatever you can talk about, outers introduces you into a realm and once you enter in a realm, you will never fail. The name Isaac means laughter because she laughed. When she laughed, she laughed because of one thing. Yeah, emotions could not allow it or accept it. When you laugh, it's a result of your emotions refusing what you've been saying. For example, if I say, uh, if I say, uh, I have five million US dollars in my pocket, you are going to say no. Because you know five million cannot fit there. Your emotions, they are refusing. It's not going to happen. Right? Let me give you another example. If, 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 if your daughter or your son or your brother, just think of anyone you like, anyone you like, put that person in your mind right now. Imagine if that person call you right now and say, ah, come tomorrow, I want to write you a check for one billion. You are going to laugh because your emotions is not going to allow that. It's not going to accept it. So once your emotion cannot accept something, you end up laughing. The Lord says at the age of 100, Abraham is going to have a child with someone who is 90 years old. She laughed. Why? Your emotions could not accept it. When emotions cannot accept, people laugh. That is why Isaac was called Isaac because emotions refused that it will happen. So if you want to build an altar for Isaac, altar, you have to give something that your emotions can't agree with you. Your own mind can't agree with you. Have you given a car? Something that if a pastor comes and says, give a house, you laugh and say, ha, 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 what are you doing about? Where am I going to live? Something that your emotions can't accept. Do you know it's easy for me to say, everybody, go on my website and give $5. Right now, go to prophetperson.com, give $5. You see a lot of people giving $5. If you say right now, give $5,000, only $5,000, people are not going to give. Why? Emotions in them are going to tell them no. Part of them is going to say no. Something in them is going to refuse. What you refuse is your Isaac outer. What you refuse is your Isaac outer. It is like the widow, the, 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 uh, the woman of Zarephath. That widow of Zarephath was able to be told by, Ab by, by Elijah the prophet, go, go now and fetch me water. She said, okay, sir. When she was on a way to get that, the Bible says something important. The prophet says, also bring me food. Bring me a cake. She did not accept that. 
she is willing to give a prophet water because it is easier for her to do that but then she replied and says no this is my last cake that i may eat me and my son then we die your last is your isaac that is why isaac came at the last age of their lives when they were out and gone and never thinking is going to happen your isaac is your last drop your last money left in your account your isaac is your last suit in your wardrobe your isaac is your last car in the garage your isaac is your only house that you have and if you want to enter in a dimension of supernatural provision like abraham the angel of god can only come down to say here is a ram when you enter in a level where you give your own isaac you give what you have never given some of you it's very easy to give water like the woman of zarephath but it's it's never easy to give a cake but what happened when she gave a cake she entered in a realm of supernatural provision it is in that dimension that realm where you see miracle money it is in that dimension where you see miracles taking place you are asleep you wake up in the morning your fuel tank is up and is full you know last night it was empty you get up, you check your account, you see there is $5,000. You know there was only $2 and nobody made a deposit. The dimension of supernatural provision is only accessed when you build an altar for the Isaac. Where, when your emotions refuse it. When your heart can't believe that you are giving that. I, I, I gave a powerful testimony to my wife because... We cannot just get into a building. Mm -mm. You, you, you can't just uh, buy millions of dollars worth of building and then say, ah, oh, God bless us with the building. It doesn't work like that. That is why people are waiting for a realm, but a realm does not move. A person can move to a dimension, but a dimension can never move to them. That is why nothing is happening to you because you are waiting for something that is not going to move. You want a house to walk to you. It does not happen like that. You have to walk to a house. So dimensions or realms, they don't come to you. You go to a realm. You visit a dimension through the power of an altar. So I said to my wife, I am a strange giver. And everyone that is close to me, they understand what I'm talking about. They know I'm a strange giver. A strange, when I say strange, I mean I give crazy. Extra, extra crazy. I give extra crazy. Now, I am in LA and we have given and given and given and given and given a lot. And it came a time now. I'm believing God for a major miracle. I'm believing God for a turnaround. I'm believing that something is about to happen. Guess what happened? God brought a turnaround in my life. And it led me to bring an Isaac type of a seed. Oh, brashata lamandi. We have been saving and saving and saving for a long time. Then God is introducing us now into a dimension. God is challenging us to get into a dimension to give what we have never given. Woo. I have been in giving until I came to a place where I almost got tired of giving. Though I know the power of giving, I almost got tired of giving. But God kept on speaking to me now. We are believing God for a house and we are believing God for a church building in the same man. My church don't have money, I have money and God is telling me to give. Oh, Kaba Santo, Lord, how am I going to do this? I've never struggled to give, but only that time I wrestled in my spirit. I had problems in me. I had this anger. It's, it's, it's like anger. It's like anxiety. It's like I, I, I just don't know what to do. I don't want to talk to people. I, I'm challenged within me. Then I texted my wife. Baby, I need this, this and that. And I need to do this, this and that. I'm going to sow a seed. And she replied, if the Lord have led you to do that, do it. It is very important for you to, to do that. Then I sacrificed. The moment I brought that sacrifice and I gave. I believe that with God all things are possible. That moment when I gave, the Lord brought a turnaround. Within hours, I received a call. Maryland, we got the building, these are the terms. 
I negotiated, I spoke A, B, C, D, boom. It's working for our favor. We don't have this, we don't have this, we don't have this working for our favor. And tomorrow we are signing that contract how? The money I was supposed to use to pay for the building, I took the money and I transferred it to become a seed. And I don't know how I shall have a building until God brought a turn around. God is also ministering to someone who is believing God to enter in a new dimension. You need to have your Isaac that you are believing this is your breakthrough to your property. This is your breakthrough to a huge business. This is your capital to your huge business. This is your breakthrough. This is your Isaac. This is your only. That becomes a sacrifice that brings a turn around to bring a testimony in your life. I had people uh, just opening for me and blessing me and opening for me. I have one of my sons, I said, give me this, I'll do this for you and I'll do this after this long and I'll do ABC. He said, Papa, how much you need? I need this amount, $50,000 cent. Papa, ta, 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 na, my son, ta, 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 100,000 cent. I have another one, Papa, 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 20,000 cent. This one amount cent, amount cent. We are almost getting to the amount we are looking for. And why is it God is providing such and such because there was an Isaac Kabo Satala Hate Brikatala Mandere de Bosha. People they think Ayarabasanda. People they think God angel came down because he heard the voice of Abraham. No. The voice of Isaac when you're saying, ah, yeah, Father, don't do that. Ah, ah. And the servants are seeing the father and the son are fighting. And the servants, guess what were they saying? The servants were shouting, Abraham, don't do that to your son. Because uh, they, they were saying, Isaac, don't do that to your son. <laughs> because they see a young man with his strength. He's trying to fight to run away from the altar. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Unless your sacrifice fights you, it is not a sacrifice. And Isaac's sacrifice will have to fight you. And Isaac's sacrifice will have to make people notice you. And there are three dimensions when we get into the Isaac sacrifice. Hmm. There are three dimensions. Hmm. Hmm. Number one dimension is a sacrifice that God will tell you to sacrifice. You have to go down and you sit your husband or you sit with your wife or you sit with your son or you sit with your daughter and you say, oh, the Lord is leading me this. Do you think is the right thing? And your son will say, Mama, it's okay. Or, ah, Mama, it's not okay. Whatever people's opinion is. Because God is just pushing you in your heart, right? Then there is a second level now. Where angels visit Abraham's house. Abraham is not going to run to look for his wife. Abraham is going to just make food and his sacrifice to the angels. And the angels eat and they send Abraham, you are blessed. Then there is another dimension now. Where Abraham is in Egypt, Kaaba Sunday, please don't do this at home. Type don't do this at home. Abraham is in Egypt and he sacrificed his wife. The wife and Abraham never sat down to plant the seed. The wife just yet, remove the red. And the wife just yet. The husband saying, she is my sister. Huh? She was shocked. You want to give me Lobola right now. And Abraham is receiving the money. And he's sending his wife. And she's shocked. What type of a man is that? There are seeds that you don't need to negotiate. You just need to obey God. Then there is a seed now. Where Abraham never sat down with Sarai. To say we are going up the mountain to give Isaac. Sarai is not going to allow that to happen. There are sacrificial seed called Isaac sacrifice. That you cannot share with anyone. But you just do it yourself. Ha. I was in LA. I don't know who was watching live then. I was in LA. And when I was in LA, I stood there. Marie Brata Kabasante. I stood in LA. And in, in the middle of my preaching, I began to prophesy. And when I was prophesying, I was late. We need to buy a house for my son, Prophet Lovin. And I told the church automatically begin to do it. I did not have time to text my wife or to call my wife. I just said to Tim, please go and take my checkbook in the car. And I wrote a 10,000 US dollar check and I gave it to him. Why? There is a now seed that needs to be done now. Hukaba Sante. It gets in a dimension called Tashuva. Tashuva means available grace. 
there is unmerited favor which is grace yes but there is the now grace is the available grace for now it's never available tomorrow it can expire mm. let me explain let me explain when peter was at the beach jesus came when he finished fishing the whole night and he said give me your boat that was the now tashuva grace the available grace if peter would say was going to say i am tired i'm cleaning my nets i want to go sleep come back tomorrow tomorrow he was not going to catch the fish that he caught that day the moment he gave jesus the boat right away jesus says oh you gave me your boat i'm gonna give him my fish go back and fish right now why it's available grace there is a seed god is speaking to you right now if you say i'll do it tomorrow or i'll do it when i receive my next pay or when i do it hmm, you will miss the the, the the tashuva grace tashuva demands now and it provides now i'm looking for people that can say oh, oh i am waiting for my breakthrough as we are hearing about altars i'm going to make a step of, of faith and i'm taking my action now bless you annie ccdcn i don't know sorry about that i don't know about to pronounce that but there, there is a now seed there is an available seed there is an available outer that is connected to tashuva available grace that when god is speaking to you in your heart you don't say i'll do it next year you don't say i'll do it after four months you don't say i'm having this in the savings i'm having this so i can't touch it you have to act now and do it now to an extent that in the bible you see some people going out to borrow in order to do the work why because when tashuva is available now you have to act now so abraham never had time to sit down with wife and uncles and cousins and say no 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 he went up the mountain and he made a sacrifice when he built an altar he entered in the supernatural provision a ram was there tied by the tree malebra hastida then there is what we call pigeon so we dealt with the ram we dealt with the hypha we dealt with the dove now we are talking about uh, the pigeon now bless those that are giving in jesus name may god bless you pigeon is divided into two it's two words coming in together p-i-g pig space then after after space we talk about e-o-n aeon Aeon, that's where we get the word aeon, A E O N. So it's a pig aeon. Now, aeon is a period of time that is so long that it cannot be measured. It's called the timeless zone. So there are people that the Bible says do not put your bread into the pigs, do not share your bread. Your, 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 your bread into the pigs do not put your bread where they are pigs because the pigs are going to trim on it and nothing is going to happen what is bread bread is a donor what is a donor a donor is revelation so there are people that make sure that your revelation will not come to pass is it revelation about your marriage there are people that make sure you will never be married why the bible looks at those people as symbolized by a pig so they will make sure you don't get your things in time they bring a delaying delay and delay and delay it's a meeting after a meeting you are about to get into a breakthrough but nothing happens you are you are about to sign this house nothing happens you are about to get this breakthrough nothing happens you are about to sign this contract nothing happens why there are people that you are putting your bread you are giving your revelation to wrong people that are stamping on it to make sure it doesn't happen sometimes learn to zip your mouth when abraham gave a pigeon what he was doing he was now cutting delaying spirits in his journey so that things can happen now now 
you have to understand that when when, when we deal with uh, with pigs pigs they represent sin pigs they represent sin so there are people that are in sin or sin itself can delay your breakthrough before God. You must come to that place where you begin to understand that what you have is so special that sin cannot delay the manifestation of what you are carrying. Because what happens is that your breakthrough is inside of you. Your breakthrough is in your character. Is not in your personality. There's a difference between personality and character. Right? That is why you see a husband and a, man, a woman and a wife can stay together for 20 years, 30 years, and the man will still say to his wife, you don't know me. What are you talking about? You know my personality, but my personality changes each and every season. In this season, I'm stingy. In the next season, I'm giving. In this season, I like KFC. In the next season, I like I, I, I like Nando's. In this season, I like Gucci. In another season, I like Versace. In this season, I like to preach. In another season, I like to prophesy. Personality changes according to seasons. But, character does not change. And God moves uh, to, to, to get into your character. Because a character deals with your heart. But personality deals with your mind. What you think right now is what you do. But your character is permanent, while your personality is temporal. Therefore, what am I saying? I am saying, when we enter in a dimension of giving a pigeon out, a pigeon out, it removes ideas for wrong things. Therefore, you don't waste time in doing everything, but you connect in time to do things you are supposed to do now, right now. The devil wants you to do things of now after 10 years and wants you to achieve the now breakthrough after 10 years. But it is the outer that you build now that will bring forth results now. So when you begin to build this outer, you are now creating a platform that will take you to a place where you have never been. God is saying to some people, I'm about to take you to a higher level i'm about to take you into a bigger dimension but they can never be me taking you higher unless you introduce yourself to a dimension another uh, another another abbreviation for outer is al which is all t d a areas are right so in another words, we are saying when we are building an outer, we are making all of our areas ripe because it is a dimension or a realm that brings right to my fruit. You can produce fruits, but if they are not ripe, nothing happens. So you need to understand that if you enter in a realm, your fruit becomes ripe. There are people you know, you have the prophetic in you. You know you have a gift. You know you have the ability for business. You know you received a prophecy in the past. But what's happening to you? Where is the manifestation? Why is no God using you right now? He is not using you. Why? Because you are gifted, but your gift is not yet right. So A L is O, T is the, A, A is areas, R is right. All the areas. All the areas in my life have to be ripe by the power of an outer. Right? Then we go to the last dimension where we deal with the gods. Abraham at last he was told to take a god and place it on the outer. The outer, the outer giving of a god represents something important. It represents someone who has been suffering because of your son, your daughter, your husband, or anyone you love. This is a dimension where you, you, you see the difference between an altar of a sheep and the altar of a God is that a God itself, Cabra Shata Lamandi, a God itself, it goes everywhere, a sheep is still. If you are flocking sheep, you go in front of them and you move with the stuff 
and they follow you and the sheep hears your voice. But a goat you don't go in front because they go, they run everywhere. So you go behind them with the dogs. Not only yourself, you need to have three, four, five other people around you so that you can circle them and always keep them in a group, in a good place, in the same place. Or you are going to lose them. So when we deal with the gods, we are talking of stubborn sons, stubborn children, stubborn husbands, stubborn wives, people that are around you that have got the behavior of a god. Hmm. Gods, they don't hear, they, 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 they hear the voice. <laughs> sheep, they hear the voice. The Bible says, my sheep hears my voice, not my God hears my voice. Why? They both can hear. But it is a sheep that knows the voice. My sheep knows my voice. A sheep hears the voice, a God hears the voice. But a sheep knows the voice, the God does not know the voice. <laughs> so you have to understand this. That many people are standing in a position where they can hear the voice of God, but they don't know the voice of God. They hear the voice of God, but they don't know the voice of God. Why? They have not yet placed an altar for a God altar. A God altar is an altar that enables you, number one, to enter in a realm of knowledge. They that knoweth their God shall do exploits. My sheep knoweth my, God, my voice. Now you have to understand the gods, they hear the voice, but they don't know the voice. So there are people that are in this place. That you have to understand that God is about to take you to a higher dimension. God is about to take you to a higher realm. Into a bigger rank. But it is an altar that can deliver, be it your son, that is everywhere. Be it your daughter, that is everywhere. It is that God, that God you have to come down and answer you when you cry to God, when you pray to God. So God is speaking to some people that have been struggling in their lives. They say, oh, my son is like this. They say, oh, my daughter is like this. Oh, my husband is like this. No. It is a realm that controls a reign. What do you want to reign in? You need a realm that to expose you to that. So there are people that have been praying, 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 praying for their sons to change. Their sons can't change. They pray, 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 pray for their daughters to change. Their daughters don't change. They pray, pray, pray for their husband. Nothing happens. Nothing happens on earth unless there is an angel that is controlling that thing. But angels, they can only operate in their realms. So an altar introduces you to a realm that connects you with an angel, that makes the angel to do things before you. That is why the Bible says in the book of Exodus chapter number 23, My angel shall go before you to bring you into a place of your blessings and your inheritance. There is a place for your blessings. Blessings, there is a place for your inheritance, there is a place for your breakthrough, and you can never be in this place unless the angel leads you. Which angel is going to lead you? The angel that you can only introduce in your life by the power of outer. That is why when Abraham wanted to inherit the place, God told him, create an outer. That is why when Abraham wanted to be the father of all nations, he took his only son. You want to be father of human beings, he took a human being and he gave. Sometimes what you want is what you have to sacrifice. Though you cannot sacrifice a human being. The Bible declares something important. When Elijah wanted the rain to come down, what did he do? He took an outer, put a boo, put everything, but then he took water which was not easy to find in those days, and he poured it on the altar, and the water overflowed into the trench until it covered everything in there. And when God came down, he consumed everything and squashed everything even in the trench. And guess what happened? When water came, the water came in abundance. You want a car. You need to come off from the ordinary zone. 
and enter into that level where you give a car that you've never given you write you see the phone numbers that are coming up there you write to our office right now and you say oh i need a car we are putting the the phone numbers there so you can uh you can call the numbers that are appearing on the screen or you can email us on the email that is on the screen i have this car i'm showing it as a seed i have this house i'm showing it as a seed i have this things i have this microphone for your church i have these drums for your church i have these instruments for your church oh prophet you just bought a building i have painting for the whole church oh prophet my my, my company is does decoration we are going to do decoration prophet i am going to sacrifice an altar for my company to do what we do for you just for you without doing anything for it why because once you put that altar it exposes you into a dimension for you to reign and that dimension that you are exposed to you said angel leading you my angel shall go before you the angel leads you and he shall prepare a place and make it happen for you so god is about to establish somebody and god is about to turn around your life but you have to understand the power of an outer changes everything give me this come malibra sadabahasa me libro sadabahase so in conclusion i want you to master this the former satanist mr nyandoro here was telling us something important when we were in the satanic kingdom we would ask a person what do you want and the person doesn't want uh say i want to pray for a change he would just say exactly what he wanted I want my son to be like this, or I want my daughter to be like, I want my child to be like, I just, just want to be like this. And he gave something important, I don't, know, I don't know how many people are watching that day, he gave us something important. He said, uh uh, prophet, what is bound by an altar can never be freed by prayer. It, it takes an altar to set free an altar. And I asked him if you're here, you know what I asked it. I said to the man, what if the mother went to you as a satanist and sacrificed his daughter, her daughter and said, my daughter will not be married in favor for this. And then the daughter goes, comes to you years later and says, I want to be married. What happened? And he says, my, the daughter, we have to find a bigger altar than the altar of the mother. Why? Because it is an altar that fights an altar. Elijah did not fight the altars of Baal by prayer. He fought the altars of Baal by altar and prayer. There are altars that were made before you were born. Those altars need you to build an altar and break it. As I taught you last time, an altar becomes a human being in these days. Melchizedek is an altar which Abraham yet to put. For a word to be spoken in his life. I'm going to pray with you today. But always understand this. That things of the spirit. There is always bondage in the realms of the spirit. Jesus came down to let this captivity free. And when Jesus came down, Jesus did not set the captivity free. The Bible says in the book of Ephesians chapter 4, when Jesus went to hell, he led the captivity captive. He took them from one captivity into another captivity. That is why when he breaks the yoke of the devil, he says, carry my yoke for it is lighter. You can never come out from, an, out from a yoke and go without another yoke. You can never come out from an outer and go without another outer. It's obvious that to come out from the outer of generational cases into an outer of generational blessings. Every body here is owned by a spirit. Passion is owned by a spirit of the prophetic. Benihin is owned by the spirit of miracles and healings. Noel Jones is, is, is owned by the spirit of preaching. 
everybody needs to be owned by a spirit but unless one spirit comes another spirit cannot go but it is the outer that introduces you into a dimension for you to operate in a dimension you have never operated in so number one it starts with the sacrifice of an outer number two it goes to the sacrifice that goes with the power of prayer a prayer without an outer will usually take time it will take long time it will delay or sometimes nothing happens but an outer is a guaranteed act of revelation that will bring forth a turnaround over your life i'm just here to prophesy and minister to you and speak a prophetic declaration god is about to introduce you into a better life marie bro shatalahave God himself being God, he had to sacrifice his own son to bring forth a change in the human race. God is about to touch and bring a turn around in your life. I also spoke last time when I was here. And I said many people, they wonder why person now ask donation after donation and donation. And many people were writing loving what I explained. I said, the person that is in America right now started a church in January. Our church right now is only nine months. Nine months. In fact, we started February. Our church is eight months. And within those eight months, we have grown our crowd to be over 300 people. Plus those that are not consistent. And we have managed to buy a building with those eight months millions of dollar building and within those eight months we have established a lot of following on facebook on periscope on youtube everywhere around the world in those eight months we have changed thousands of thousands of people we were seeing people that did one on one this year only is over five thousand people and all of them i prophesied them obvious accurately accurately prophesied them one by one and the lives have changed spiritual husbands being delivered people being delivered from spiritual husband delivered from this and that people getting breakthroughs people being healed people going through this being changed god touching lives and all those things are happening in eight months and i began to explain that to buy a building it's not a prayer but it is someone who we have given an offering to our church for us to have these cameras and come live with this nice good quality it's someone who had to buy this we were struggling to go live. One of my sons called Gabriel bought a computer for us to start going live without any cuttings. Someone had to install internet for our office. Someone had to do this decoration. Someone had to buy all these metals, all these things. Why? It all takes money and people, they don't understand that. We build a website. We build this. We do, we do this and people, they don't know all these things. People, they just look at us looking kind of. They say, wow, look at this. They don't know quality picture to take place someone to take a picture someone had to add that picture and all those things is money so money became a need in the house of god and when money becomes a need in the house of god god gives you a money and he also gives you a need for your need to change you have to take care of the needs that are in the house so you have to understand now as i conclude that there was a woman who, who came to Jesus in the house of Simeon and she broke the alabaster al what what flask and she took oil and anointed the feet of Jesus and began to wipe with her hair hey look what happened this is the power of of, of realms <laughs> because you are bound by your realm you can never see outside of your realm you can only see inside of your realm. Let me explain better. Hmm. There was Peter, who is the chief protocol of Jesus. What is the realm of Peter? Come, leave fishing business. I'll make you the fishers of men. From why? From the world into the church. From thieves into becoming evangelists. From prostitutes to become prophetess, right? So Peter opened his eyes in his realm. And he saw a prostitute. And Judas opened his eyes. Judas is not in that realm of fishing. <laughs> Judas is in the realm of money. Therefore, he said, this perfume, the price of this perfume, 
is a way it's a yearly wage of someone is the pay the salary of someone from january to december how does he know that amount of perfume to even even counting cents is because he was in the realm of finances <laughs> But Jesus saw the slate coming with a seed. Why? Jesus was in the realm of seed. That is why he was given by the Father as a seed on earth. <laughs> that is why you are alive on Facebook. Someone will come and say you are a thief. Why? He's in the realm of thieves. Someone will come and say, ah, you're a prostitute. Why? He's in the realm of prostitution. You can only see in your realm. That is why some of you will be saying, Father, why? You are in the realm of sonship. <laughs> You are submissible. You can only see. Some will come and say, Gaffer, why? You are also a living legend. You are in that realm. Some will say, FBI prophet, why? They are in the forensic. You can only see a man according to the realm that you are in. That is why Jesus would come to a blind man and say, What do you want me to do for you? Do you believe? Belief is what? You believe what you see. But the man is blind and Jesus is asking why. He is only talking a language of in the dimension where he is in. He is seeing, therefore he is asking, do you believe? Because he also believes. So many pastors, they speak according to their realm. Some will say it's not good for people to prophesy names. Why? They are not in that realm. Therefore they will never understand anything of that realm. So realms, they speak according to the realm that you are in. You can never see outside of your realm. That is why what you see, people don't see. That is why it's very bad for you to go to a church which is not in the same realm with you. Because when you prophesy, they will shut you up. When you heal the sick, they will call you a satanist. When you preach more than the pastor, they control you and they sit you down. Why? They are not in your realm. You need to be in the same in the same category of the realm or of the people that are in the realm birds of the same feathers they fly together that is why we have people that came to be with us during our life facebook and they left us some came in our periscope they left us some they stayed some they are still here some are still coming why it takes people that are in the realm that i'm in for them to understand the revelation that i share for me to come here and tell you the seven spirits of god you have to be in the realm of understanding the seven spirits of god and some of you you are entering in the realm by the knowledge i'm sharing with you and i pray for you today kabush tamandi God ministered to me today that there are people that are going to stand in two dimensions of grace that is going to open portals for them in this month of October. He clearly spoke to me and he said the people, there are two groups. Some are going to give a $55 seed. Some are going to give a $555 seed. You are going to give as the Spirit leads you and push you according to the results that you are looking for. Remember, you can never try to enter in a realm of millions by giving a dollar or a dollar or a coin, a quarter. It is actually your giving and your heart that pushes you into a dimension, into a realm. So I'm personally challenging you to follow the prophetic instruction. Find a $55 note or a $555 note and make your sacrifice. As you sacrifice, pray for the month of October and say this month of October is my month. This is the month of manifestation. I have my car in the realms of the spirit. I already built an altar for it or am I going to build an altar this week? I already have my husband in the realms of the spirit. I want the manifestation. I already have my child and I've been praying my child and I've built an altar for my child. Or I'm about to build an altar for my child to break that God spirit in his life. Mm -hmm. I want you to go to the website right now. $55 seed. There shall be a turnaround that will take place in your life. Thank you, Jesus. We are going to play the song Hosanna. Uh, and all these songs of mine that you need, if you want to download them, go to the website prophetpassion.com and download those ones. So those with a $55 seed, go to the website. If you have 555 let your seed be in five. And this is the Tashuva, the now availability move of God. 
Go and sow now as we play the song in Jesus' name. Amen.
God bless everybody watching me and bless those that are giving. Covenant Fountain Church bless you for your giving. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord empower you, strengthen you. Uh, Covenant Fountain Church bless you. Erica Perez bless you for your offering. Cindy Basket bless you for your offering. Nara Karunka bless you for your offering. Uh, Gabriel Rosanna, oh, bless you, my son. He's the one I was telling you about the computer for us. God bless you, son. Cindy Basket, bless you. Nara Ku Karunaka, bless you. Priscilla Downs, bless you. Julie, Julie Gicini, bless you for your offering. May the Lord bless you. Mallory, Mallory Bien, I am, yes. I'm not good in reading sometimes. Bless you for your offering. Anthony Grieve, bless you. Rachel Temat. Tematas, bless you. Motosis, bless you. God bless everybody giving. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord empower you and strengthen you. I pray that October become fruitful to you. Let there be a blessing and an anointing for you in Jesus' name. Uh, tomorrow, by all means, don't forget to have your milk and your honey. I'm going to be announcing the unprophetic anointing oil. As we are launching our oil online for the first time here then wednesday i'll be launching it physically in the church then thursday i'll i'll, I'll release it in our maryland church so wednesday is in new york city and thursday it's in maryland here on our first day in our new building that the lord has blessed us with maria Barbaros, bless you for your offering and so tomorrow make sure you have your oil uh, you, your 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 what do you call it your honey and your milk and it's going to be powerful god is going to bless you god is going to empower you and you're going to witness the mighty power of god the mighty hand of god god is going to strengthen you bless you and empower you so may the lord bless you may the lord empower you i pray that god will bless you always let me move with you steps as i conclude step number one is the major altar that is used by many evangelists when they do crusades and it they become religion all around the world mainly in america matusa say who may bless you for another offering in jesus name uh judy and bless you for your uh the first outer is what you call out call when you preach the gospel and pastor says come and receive jesus come to the altar for an outer call why outer call it's a place where you are, where you are introduced into another dimension so you are tired of your sinful life in the realm you've been in you want to get into a new realm now where jesus sets you free you come to the outer because outer introduces you into a realm second outer it is no longer you now it is now about you you now need things to change in your life you have sexual addictions pornography addiction you have any other addictions you have problem you don't have a good character be it it's you or it's your children or someone connected to you that's the god outer that you build and give so that someone can be established you are stuck you're not hearing the voice of god you don't know when god speaks is it god or not or you don't even hear god you get into that dimension anna katema bless you for your huge offering in jesus name uh i'm yet to call Anna again and uh then there's a outer call for uh, an outer for isaac where you give what what can't be accepted in you to give you 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 give your best your isaac your only beat a car beat a house beat what you have what you can't afford to give right and and just don't hear about this also act on it and make sure you practice it every day then there is a, a giving or to discover the discovery giving which is the 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 ram is it the ram yeah the ram giving which is very 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 important then we move from that and we get into another level of giving and we spoke about the the pigeon giving pigeon is when you don't just give everywhere the bible says do not give your offering everywhere don't put your bread onto the pigs they will tramp on it it's a delaying spirit that will delay you so those are dimensions that i want you to always exercise repeat this video and repeat take notes and change your lives these things they are not preachings or teachings these things are real 
I have seen those things, I have practiced these things, and I've seen them working. No matter the distance, God is going to bless you, God is going to empower you, and God is going to take you to another level, into another dimension. So it is my prayer for you. That before this year comes to an end, let your prophecy come to pass. I pray for you. Let every declaration in your life come to pass. Let your dream come to pass. Your vision come to pass. I pray that you come forth from the dimension you have been in and you enter in a new dimension. I speak by the grace of the Holy Ghost, by the favor of the Almighty, that God will bless you, that God will empower you, that you enter in a realm you have never been in. It's your time, it's your season, and God is going to bless you, establish you, and lift you higher. Keep on praying, and tomorrow be ready for your milk and honey, so that we can do the teaching and also announcement of the release of the oil. God bless you. Until then, keep on keeping on, and those that are giving, keep giving even after this broadcast. You can keep giving, and may the Lord bless you and establish you in Jesus' name. Amen. Prophet Passion. Benny Hinn. The minute the Spirit of God fills your life. Dr. Cindy Dream. Pray in tongues, you sing in tongues. Kenneth Hagen. He fills your life, and the next thing you find is. Pastor Chris. You will know. And Rodney Howard. God's word. Mighty Transforming Tongues by God's Generals Part 2 Fire! Ronde kista na liga para kouja la mande Kouja la mande Set! Run! Run! Run with the move of God Run with the move of God Run! Elama Sukoro Revive Enama Okoro Ronde kista na liga para kouja la mande Kouja la mande I'm gonna move to the right The anointing is gonna shift economics in here Ronde kista na liga para kouja la mande Gatipe que dice Lesio pro tu le prete es o no Es o no Es o no Es o no Pele hi shoot it Pele hi shoot it Mama la husa na ma la freheke Mama ma 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 Muli kentum kontini meridian de la braba Fire! Fire! Ronde kista na liga para kouja la mande Jakwa la kwata Ikoto balika Zezibo kopuya Me kriya katuma Le kuta batika tokobo Ronde I'm moving all the way straight. There's a W. I'm moving on a road written W. As I'm moving all the way, uh, uh, there is a left hand, but I'm turning right. It's written Airport Road. Airport Road. I'm turning, I'm seeing a place. It's written Walla Walla, Walla Walla, Walla Walla, Walla Walla. That's where I was from. The goals of Ramiro Andre de Agastu Joe Ramiro of Prestigious. La Rosotti, Gino Practice, Show Ramande, La Grosse Parahatis, Li Grosse Shoba, Rate Cosima, Son Salama. I decree and declare that the spigot is open. Now, Father, like a tsunami, I decree and declare that you are going to begin to move from my right and left. I decree and declare, Father, that you will move from the front to the back. Father, as I move across the stage, I decree everyone, hallelujah, that sees me as I move will be slain. And you will birth, you will birth. Father, they will pick up mantles in the realm of the spirit. I decree and declare right now that as I move across 
across the stage. Hallelujah. And economics are going to be shifted. Finances are going to be shifted. I decree and declare that the wealth of the wicked is no longer laid up for you, but the wealth of the wicked is being released. I decree and declare that winds of the spirit are beginning to blow and they're blowing into your home. I decree and declare that your sons and daughters, by virtue of the fact of your praise, you are going to birth them into the kingdom. You are your sons and daughter are going to be birthed into the kingdom while they're in prison. They're going to be birthed into prison while they're in crack houses. Your husbands are going to come back. Your ministries are going to turn around. I decree and declare a supernatural anointing sweep. Father, from my right to my left, as I move, everybody open your eyes. Here it is. Mighty Transforming Tongues by God's Generals Part 2 He is a prophetic revelatory voice to the nation since 2001. God has called him to be a prophet of prophets. I all started in Chitun Waisa, Zimbabwe. Also know as a teacher and a spiritual father in his prophetic school. and mentorship programs. He has over 30 books in his prophetic school. Nicknamed Chariot Rider because of the way he prophesies. He is Prophet Passion.